Hi guys and welcome to another Brown Car Guy and Buddies episode and in this one I'm going to be talking to Chandan Basu Malik who's all the way over in India. However, like me, he is British Asian, he is London born. However, I met him in Dubai when I moved out there in 2006. He was an established journalist already and he's worked on pretty much most of the titles in the region um, as editor or otherwise, including the Middle East editions of Autocar and F1 magazine magazine and of course Wheels magazine that is produced by Gulf News in Dubai. So he's got a lot of stories to tell, a lot of anecdotes, a lot of interesting stuff to get into. It's going to be real fascinating to catch up with him. He left Dubai even before I did so it's actually been a long time since I've seen him. So yeah this is going to be fantastic. Before we get into that make sure that you're subscribing to youtube.com forward slash brown car guy. Make sure that you're following me on all the social media channels. Just search for hashtag brown car guy. You can see it on my hat there. You can follow me on Instagram. Twitter and Facebook and of course subscribe to browncarguy.com. Cool, let's get into this. Oh my god Chandan, it has been ages. How long since we met? Because you actually left Dubai even before I did, didn't you? Yes, I did. I think the last time we met was in Beirut. We were uh, checking out the Infinity FX. That's right. We went to the museum as well, didn't we? Absolutely. And uh, if I remember correctly, we, we found a couple of uh, quirky things and, uh, in the car and, and, and we decided, okay, we need to talk about this yeah. in, our, in our review. So I think that was the last time uh, uh, I met you. And uh, as you know, uh, 2018, January, I returned to India. Right, right. Uh, two, yeah, two things for that, because A, the company which we were working, they decided to shut down publishing. And uh, then, as you know, Raj was uh, looking after the uh, project. And Raj uh, went in for digital. So we uh, were digital for about a year, a year and a half. And then again, uh, the owner of Ottoman, they, uh, Mr. Uh, well, I forgot his name. It's okay. Listen, listen, can... listen, you're jumping ahead. You're jumping way, way ahead. Uh, let's, let's, let's start early on. But before we do that, it's interesting that you brought up Beirut because I was thinking about, because obviously there's been that disaster in Beirut that just happened recently. And, you know, I was yes. thinking back to that time because it was a lovely city. You know, we had a great time there. And uh, I was just trying to remember where that, that hotel that we stayed in and that, that museum, that must have been in the area, right? Where the, where the damage happened. It was close by. It was close, close by because that was kind of uh, near to the diplomatic area, if you remember. Yeah, that's it was right. Quite a, quite a market area. Yeah, yeah. And, and when we returned the cars, we could see the, the buildings which had pock marks, uh, bombshell marks, and yes, things like yes. that. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a of history there. So, I, I, so when you see the pictures right now, it's, it's as if, you know, the city was bombed again. My so God, it's quite, really, quite it's really sad, really sad. Love, love, and, you know, love and wishes to all of our, our Lebanese colleagues, friends, and all the people that we know. Uh, out there wishing them all the very best, you know, hope that they're able to get through this. The, the good thing is some of our friends uh, like Munir, Sada, they, they are fine. They are, they are safe. Yeah, because yeah, I yeah. Keep so it, it's good. I mean, they're coping with it. There's nothing much they can do. No, it's, so, it's tough times for everybody. How has the lockdown been for you over there in India? Where were you exactly lockdown? in India? Kolkata. Mm -hmm. Kolkata. It's the, the former capital of uh, erstwhile British Raj. And uh, lockdown has been quite uh, eventful in the sense, uh, uh, right now, again, it's kind of on and off. And uh, the, the figures are not very encouraging. Uh, yesterday, 66,000 people got infected. And well, in, in, a day, city, in a day? In a day? In a day, yes. We have wow. surpassed the year. Oh my India gosh. Has Yes, India has surpassed the U.S. Um, they're trying to normalize things, but in reality, it's not happening the way it should be because it's too difficult, it's too diverse, it's too big, it's, it's very difficult to control. Yeah. And um, the, the other part is, although the government is educating people that uh, 
the do's and don'ts, but it still feels that the message is not getting hammered. People are not taking it really that seriously. Uh, as a result of which, uh, things are happening. I mean, there's nothing uh, you can do about it. And the so, worst part so, is very. So how sorry? does it, how has this affected you? I mean, are you able to do? Are you are you stuck at home? Are you able to get out and do any work, or what's happening? Um, since 12th of March, I'm I'm virtually stuck at home. Wow. Uh, for a couple of months, three months, I was totally at home. Um, only recently, I've been able to go out, and that too, I I, I don't walk on streets. I just take my, my bike or car wherever I need to go so that I'm in least contact with people. I don't go to the markets. I don't do uh, uh, any, any, any social stuff. Very, very, very rare unless it's known people. Um, the family takes care of that. Um, basically working from home because I had joined a, a new uh, startup in January. Right. And we, and, and we launched around mid-February, and then in almost second week of uh, March, uh, we went into lockdown. So, so basically, life is like that. So it's, it's, it's more it's like crazy a time. Oh, seriously, yeah. it's, been a, it's been a crazy year, really, isn't it? But I know yeah. you from Dubai, where you've worked for a fair number of, uh, actually, outlets over there. But actually, you're a fellow British Asian, aren't you? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. I was born in London, uh -huh. in Hammersmith. Uh -huh. Yes, yes. You my, can, would my, you would you would you care to mention when that was? Hammersmith. No, when? Queen Charlotte, Queen Charlotte's Hospital. When? 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 Uh, fifty-six, second of May, nineteen fifty-six. Nineteen fifty-six. Oh my God. <laughs> Cool, man. That you, you're part of the history. That's for sure. So, so you, so you're London-born, like me. I'm also London-born. That's amazing. And um, you, so you, you schooled here as well. Uh, and, yes. Yeah, yeah. And you had you, your parents were doctors. Yes. Um, so schooling was mostly in Margate, south of England, Kent, and uh, so that's that's the uh, the place where I spent most of my childhood and schooling before we uh, came back to India in around uh, mid 60s, and then uh, a year I was in the city, and then uh, we moved to UP in Varanasi. That's quite weird because you moved back to India probably in the mid 60s, yes. which is probably when my dad moved to England in the mid 60s you know <laughs> and and you mentioned and, the, and there's there's so many parallels there because you mentioned up and my dad was originally from up so, yes. that's, so if i'm not incorrect meerut would it be meerut you know what you got me i'd have to go back and check you know but yeah <laughs> somewhere somewhere it is in, in Uttar Pradesh yeah that's where it's from yeah you, you, you told me uh, in 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 Beirut we, we were right, talking right. about uh, could be yes. could be yeah, yeah could be i mean that was probably yeah, yeah, because yeah. Uh, you might be right because that was probably closer to when he passed away. It was a few years ago now, and I probably and I remember going through a lot of his documents and stuff. So I was looking at his old certificates and stuff. So I probably so yeah, but my memory is really bad. But yeah, you're probably right. So that's that's interesting. Well, one of the things you mentioned about Margate is where is that's where you saw your first car, your first automobile. Yes, um, I still remember it vividly. It used to be a single gazelle, a blue and hang white. On, a, hang, a on, hang, on, hang on, hang on, hang on, wait a minute, wait a minute. You told me that you're three years old when you saw this car and you're telling me you remember it vividly. That's amazing. I, I remember. Yes, yes, I remember. Be I remember it because the gentleman who had it, uh, Adam Mansell, he was uh, the engineer, maintenance engineer of the hospital and we were neighbors. Oh, right, right. In, 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 in Margate, yes. So it was a, a, a four-flat, uh, two-story building, and we were neighbors with them. They didn't have children, so I was kind of their adopted son. Right. So I would, <laughs> I, I would spend more time with them than actually my parents, because they, uh, my parents, they, have, they were have a car. Because they have a car. Yes. <laughs> yes. And he, used to, he, he was um, a kind of a DIY type of guy, typical British, you know, they... And, and he used to be, he used to tinker with the car. I remember him putting in uh, these uh, under, undercarriage lights, red lights. And uh, I used to help him 
because that's what he he told me later on. I met him a couple many years later, and he said, mm. you know, he used to call me John. My my school name was John. Right, in, right. In in England, so he say he used to say, John, do you remember you used to do this? I would open. He would open a a clock or something, and he would put lay out the parts, and he would give me the parts, and I would you know put them in place, and yeah. then when he would reassemble it, I would give it to him in the exact order. So I used to be his helper. He used to. Any any project he would do, he would actually uh, call me, and uh, I would help him out. So I was his helper, and that's how I got interest in. The, yeah, I was. In the I, I was going to say. So that must be where, because I often ask people where did the passion come from for automotive, and I, it's clear that your adoptive dad, if you like, <laughs> was was clearly more influential to you than your actual yeah. parents, who were doctors, and and they must have wanted you to be doctor, right? Yes, and uh, there's a story behind this. I, I never wanted to be one, but I they managed to get me uh, into a medical college. I, I, I did it for three months, including uh, you know the first three months uh, you are you 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 do anatomy and study anatomy and all that, which I really hated. But luckily, I I got thrown out from the medical college because I didn't have a domicile certificate, and all I right. thought that was a blessing. I thought that was a blessing in this guy's. Because then I shifted to uh, management. I did my MBA, and then I moved in a totally different line. From science, I went into commerce. Right, right. So, so I think that was, that so was my a parents couldn't blessing in disguise. Yeah. So, so, so hang yeah. on. So, how did that? So, because you said you went back to India in the in the in the mid sixties. Yeah. So, how did that happen? I mean, most people when they come here, they they tend to stay here for the long haul. They did, but uh, my dad had uh, more. Uh, he was more attached to India and his and, uh -huh. and his parents, and uh, so I, from the letters we could make out that you know, he because he being the youngest son in the right. family right, and, right. And, and grandfather getting old, uh, yeah. so they wanted to stay close by. So all those things uh, made him come back to so, India. Then he so, wanted to. So how old were you when you moved back to India then? I was about 10, 11. Okay, cool. 10 or 11. So, and by this time, you must have been into cars properly, like 10, 11. I remember I was like fully into cars by that age, you know. Oh, yes. So, so uh, when you got to uh, India, was that a little bit frustrating for you? Uh, it, not, not really, because in those days, you had a lot of uh, British cars or American cars, besides the odd ambassador and then yeah. the premier park minister and all that. So, it was not too out of place in the... Initially, because we he had a we had an Austin eight, uh -huh. we had an Austin eight at that time. It was a nineteen forty seven, one of those you know uh -huh. very uh, roly poly type cars, uh, which had a very unique starting procedure. I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about that. And that car was it, was, it wasn't a, it wasn't a crank car. handle. Was it a crank handle? It had a crank handle. It it had to be a crank because the the one of the last cars my dad had was a Ford Prefect. Oh yeah, right, right, right. And I still remember the registration number, DEG212. Oh, oh, 212. Okay. I was going to say, if it, if, it, if it ended with 42, there'd be a beautiful yes. link there to Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, wouldn't there? Ford Prefect, for number 42. Yes. <laughs> right. So uh, later, later on, I, I also remember he, he uh, dad also bought a Ford Anglia. Oh, yeah. And Yeah. So he was quite a Ford guy in, in what, those days. What color was the Anglia? It was uh, 1960. What color the, was the it? The one before, the, the one with the very rounded uh, body. Oh, not, I not see. Not the one, not, not the, the one, one with, 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 with the cut, but flashback. Right, not, right, not right. Not that one. The one, right, right. The one before it. Right, right. The one before it. And, uh, <clears throat> uh, and at one point in time, he also had uh, an Impala. A two-door oh, wow. Impala. Oh, that would have been and, cool. Uh, yes. What, yeah, and, and what, what, would that have been a 60s one? That, that would be, yeah, 59, 59.60. In, in, uh, in, in India? Where in India? No, no, not in India. In, in London. In, in he, UK. Had an, he, had he, had a, he had an Impala in London. He had an Impala. And uh, when we used to see these uh, pictures, so I asked him, what happened to this car? Well, what yeah. did you do with it? He said, I just had it for two weeks. It, it was a gas guzzler and we couldn't <laughs> afford it. <laughs> so, so he, I'm, so he I'm, it. I'm surprised he found anywhere that he could fit it. I mean, that thing is huge. It's like driving a ship on the roads, isn't it? 
absolutely amazing. It, it was very big. I mean, you could actually play in it. Uh -huh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 uh, so, so in India, you were able to keep the passion going in, when you were back in absolutely. India. Yeah. And uh, the best part was well, my dad used to be, uh, because he was a gynecologist, so he had to be called at odd hours to, to, to see patients in the hospital. So I would actually go with him because the, the catch was if I went with him, he would let me drive the car. Oh, wow. So, so I basically learned uh, to, uh, first I learned the steering and yeah. the gears by sitting next to him. He would yeah. do the clutch and the accelerator yeah. and all that. And that's how I got to learn the, the, yeah. the nuances of the steering, the, guy, the road and everything. And then later on, uh, my job was to start the car in the morning. It, it had a very specific ritual for it uh -huh. because what would happen is, because if you remember, in those days, cars used to be six volt, run yeah. on six volt battery systems, and they were not very efficient. So morning used to be a pain. You could never self start the car. So so what I would do is I would uh, go to the garage, open the bonnet. We had a jerry can with petrol, so two caps of petrol would go into the carburetor. Then we would crank it. Then we put the switch on, and then it would start. The rest of the day you're fine. Yeah. It's so, just that first so start, that was, yeah. Yeah, so, so my job was to do that and then take the car out, uh, take, a, uh, take uh, around the block, and then yeah. by the time he would finish his breakfast, he would be ready, then he would go to uh, his uh, hospital. Man, I, you know, we tend, to, we, we tend to forget nowadays when we jump into cars and start and drive off that how it used to be a ritual before to start a car in the morning and warm it up. You know, even, even in 70s cars, you had to put the choke on and stuff like that. I mean, my goodness. You know. But that made driving an event, didn't it? It made driving an actual event. Yes, yes. And the other part was uh, the brakes. Those cars had horrible brakes. <laughs> <laughs> because you were if you were lucky. Of, <laughs> yeah, the good thing was uh, you, you didn't have to speed that much because you were navigating through rickshaws and people yeah. walking and bicycles and and thin uh, narrow roads. So your speed would be more or less their speed because yeah, you yeah. Would, otherwise you would knock somebody off. So you would manage. You literally, I, I remember I, I used to stand on the pedal to get the car, you know, to, to go slow. <laughs> How, so how old were you when you started driving then? 13. Oh, wow. Cool, 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 cool. Very good. In an, in, a, in, a, in an old Austin, in an old Austin uh, 8. That's amazing. So, 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 then you, so then you continued the passion and you wanted to you know, carry on with this. At what point did you think that you, know, you wanted to do something that was related to cars as a career? Uh, soon after graduation. Soon after graduation, in fact, I, in those days, uh, there were a couple of these startup magazines. Uh, in, in fact, Adil's car and bike was one of them. Yeah, Adil uh, Jal Dalukanawala, who's actually been one of my very first guests on this series, who's a great guy. Yeah, yeah. He's, one of the, he's one of the pioneers of journalism there, isn't he, of automotive journalism. Absolutely. He's, uh, absolutely. he's like the pundit. We call him the pundit. You know, he, he's the guru of, of knowledge. Uh -huh. And... Um, so I had written, I didn't, I didn't know him. I just, you know, cold, kind of a cold call. I, I, I wrote to him. I said, look, I, I'm an enthusiast and I would like to you know, write for you. He never replied. <laughs> no, nobody replied. So, so that was it. And uh, then uh, uh, a couple of years later, when I moved to Dubai from, uh, actually, b uh, between India, I, I spent some time in UK as well. Yes. I, I started a, I started a, Indian you started, takeaway with you a, started a restaurant, didn't you? Yes, in Chelsea, Lavender yeah. Hill. Wow, Lavender Hill. So, wow. uh, so we started a restaurant, uh, a takeaway called uh, Someplace Else, a someplace which was a kind of a, yes. So it was kind of a fusion thing, and uh, it, it it did very well. I we, because of the hospital uh, across the road. Right, so right, you, right. all the nice night shift, night shift, uh, shifters yeah. would come and, you know, yeah. so it, it was doing quite well. Uh, but I had to uh, uh, kind of abandon it because my mom felt sick and I had to return to India and I got stuck right. here. Right, right, and My right. partner couldn't run it, so eventually it was uh, a, a dead loss. Right. So at that time, uh, a friend of mine from Dubai 
was on a press junket in UK. So he came to meet me and he said, why don't you, I, I told him my story. I said, look, I spent so much, I invested so much and this is what happened. Uh, I, I really don't know what this is. Look, you, you are a, a good writer. We, we know about you because you worked in advertising agencies and all that. Why don't you come to uh, Dubai and, and try out? I mean, you're, you're British, you won't need a visa and you can stay with us. Said, okay. So uh, I, in October 97, I, oh, yeah, 97, I was transiting. So I, I spent a, uh, about three weeks in Dubai and I got with, uh, landed up a job with uh, Gulf Today in Sharjah. And uh, there I was, uh, I actually replaced, replaced Julian Mil Milward Hopkins. Yes, I remember Julian, him, the, the, late, the late Julian Millwood Hopkins, who I knew as the PR for Mercedes when I went to Dubai. Right. Lovely, lovely guy, really nice guy, an old, school, an old school guy, an old school gent. Absolutely fantastic guy. So he was the features editor with uh, Gulf, uh, Gulf Today, so his PR manager. And from there, we built on a nice relationship and... Uh, a lot of nice stories with, with Julian as well. I'll come so, to that. So, so let me and, ask uh, you. So let me ask you. So you, you, you got a job with Gulf uh, Gulf today. Had you? Yes. I mean, you said you had uh, experience in advertising, but had you done any editorial before? Were you involved in journalism before that? Uh, not really. I used to write, write, but but not exactly uh, full time journalism. Um, so this was an opportunity for me to uh, be there. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, so I, I, I got in there and uh, actually I, I spent a, a time, some time with an, with an Indian publication and I often on, uh, used to write about cars and things like right. that. In fact, right. I did the first uh, Maruti Zen uh, test drive. And, just, and just, just people liked it, so just, just just repeat that again because we had a slight interference in the uh, in the video. Just say um, that. What car was it? So I was one of the earlier guys who did the test drive for the Maruti Zen, probably one of the uh, early ones for, from a non-motoring uh, uh, setup. And uh, so that gave me a kind of a feel that okay, I I, I could actually write about it. And uh, but I was not getting an opportunity in India at that time. So. The first opportunity I got to write about cars was with Gulf Today right. in the feature section where we introduced actually a two pager. It was a tablet visa, a tablet timeout. Yeah. Not, not the not the uh, the other one. This was uh, the yeah. Gulf Today timeout. It was a tabloid, weekly tabloid. So we introduced uh, uh, motoring in there. And the first first car I tested there was the Toyota Yaris. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 that's so hold, on. So hold on. I want, I want to, I want to clarify something here. So, yeah. so the first car that you reviewed, actually, no. Let's 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 go back. Let's say so the first. Let's say the first bit of motoring journalism that you would have ever have done. When would that have been? That would be the Maruti Zen, and what year would that Java be? Maruti. What year would that, that would have been? Be, uh, Eighty. Uh, 87. Wow. 87. Okay. Okay. So you've just, yeah. you've just beaten me there. You've just beaten me there. Cause I was, cause I was, I was just trying to think as a British Asian, who's the first yeah. person to have written a car review and I was 89. So you've beaten me there. So well done. So hats off to you. <laughs> 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 so, so that's the way. So yeah. So I mean, Gulf today, honestly, in yeah. Dubai was the first of, a number of different outlets that you worked on. I mean, you pretty much everything there, you know, uh, wheels and gears, uh, ad market, fleet auto, Middle East car, uh, auto car, F1 magazine. I mean, that's amazing. Yes. And wheels. I mean, this is amazing. And then, of course, we will come to Auto Man as well. But that was a heck of a career that you, you crammed into a very short time there. Okay. Yeah. So in most of the uh, jobs, I was actually poached. So... Uh, Wheels and Gear posted me from uh, from Gulf Today, and then uh, Ad Market, which uh, uh, Farah Jassin used to have, he posted me from uh, Sohel's uh, Wheels and Gears, <laughs> and then again uh, when uh, Media Factory were launching Autocar and F1 Middle East, 
they had approached Neville first, but he right. he he didn't take the job. He said he recommended me, and I got the job. So I took Ford, and uh, we did a couple of uh, a lot of good good stories out there. In fact, the first one, uh, the the launch issue was uh, with Julian actually. Right. So right. Julian got me. Uh, the first, yeah, the, we launched the um, uh, magazine auto car with uh, with the Mercedes on the cover, and then with with Julian uh, was very generous, and uh, time to time he would uh, make extra efforts and take me, send me to different places to test out cars. Yeah. It could be a one off or, or whatever, and uh, so we did a lot of good stuff with uh, with Julian, and then the best part with auto car was when we did the first uh, car of the year yeah. where we had uh, Murray Walker uh, with us. Oh, wow. Wow. Legend. Um, at the legend, yes. Yeah. And I spent three whole days with him. Uh-huh. And he's such a lovely person to, to yeah. be with. Yeah. And in fact, uh, we did an, a world exclusive um, because, you know, because we are in, uh, Indians, uh, there's a little bit of interest in politics, yeah. So I wanted to know. I I wanted to know what was the politic politics in in a Formula One. Yeah, yeah. So he gave a full story about it, and and we published published it in F1 Middle yeah. East, and and the UK guys they were surprised that okay we've been doing this for years and nobody even talked about it. Yeah. How how did you do it? And they were absolutely really over the moon uh, with this particular uh, story which we did. So, it's a, so it sounds like that of all of the titles that you worked on, um, Autocar and F1 were probably what, your favorite titles that you, that you worked on in the UAE? I mean, it, was, it was really an honor to work with, uh, with yeah. such a title. I mean, the world's oldest uh, to yeah. begin with. And yeah. it had a lot of consistency and all that. Uh, the reason why I left was it was too much of a pressure for a single guy to handle yeah. two magazines and then the translations and the translators, yeah. there used to be a pain in the backside. I mean, yeah. people saying that. Uh, and then uh, coincidentally at that time, uh, there was a guy called Mark Appleton. He was uh, editor of Wheels. They had just started Wheels and they were not doing too well. So I think the sixth or seventh issue uh, it was about to be closed, and then Mark. I met Mark at a at the uh, Cayman uh, Cayman launch, uh, and and that's where he uh, we got to know each other. And he said, "Would you? Why, why don't you? Uh, can you come and can you come and meet me? I mean, right. can you help us out?" I said, "Yeah, I can help uh, help you out." And that's how I got the wheels job. So I was with right. wheels for about two hundred and sixteen issues. Right, right, yeah. And we, 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 being a weekly, it was quite uh, fast-paced. Yeah. Oh, man. And, and, and we had a good team. We had yeah. a good team. Ahmed, uh, Dayan, uh, Sonny, um, uh, Imran. Yeah. A lot of good guys were there. A lot of good guys were there. Even Mark, for that matter. Mm. I mean, he was a brilliant uh, features writer. And uh, so we, in fact, uh, Wheels also gave me a lot of opportunity to get even closer to the automotive world and uh, a couple of um, yeah, you, world you, exclusive. Yeah, you did. I remember you did the something that I was quite jealous of at the time because I was obviously doing Car Magazine and uh, you got an exclusive with the Holden effigy, didn't you? I thought, wow, that was that was pretty cool. I was quite jealous of that. In, the, in fact, uh, they, they put me on the cover for that. Yeah, I, I, I remember. I was on the cover for that. And... <laughs> I'll, I'll try to dig out uh, the if I've got a copy of that and, and send it over to you, and that was great. And then so uh, what, so so, like, so so that was one of your highlights, I would say. So what like I mean, if you said your top three experiences, you know, doing this uh, motoring journalism in the UAE, what would they be for you? Uh, one I would say was uh, there were two people who, who whom I met uh, that the, the, those were. Uh, great experiences. One was uh, Horatio Pagani, right, and one was Bob Lutz. Yeah, and, legendary, uh, legendary guy. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I'll start with uh, Pagani. Um, this was 2001, and we were doing a special issue, and I came to know that the Pagani Zonda is going to be on display. So I put the Pagani Zonda on cover, and at the show, uh, we were. 
sitting at the stand after the launches and uh, the, the, the walk around and all that. And I was at my stand and I see a guy, a silver haired guy, short guy, walking towards me with the with, with one of our magazines. Right, right. And he he spoke in broken English. Uh, he says, what he meant to say was, who's the editor? I said, I'm the editor. He says, uh, look at this. That's me. So I said, Haroshi Pagani? He said, yes. He said, you know me? I said, yes, sir. I know you very well. And then he, he brought in his translator because he speaks Italian. Right, right. So we did a, a brilliant interview with him. And I used to keep meeting him at various shows. And the moment he would see me, he would come, come to me, hug me and show me his cars and talk about technology and what he's done with the Huara, what he's done with the other cars, the R's and, and how things are moving. And in between one of those uh, shows, uh, uh, I was, uh, for a short period, I was jobless. And I was very depressed. But I, I was attending shows and all that. And he saw me. And he says, what's the matter? You know, why don't you look so happy? I said, look, this is what the problem is. So, and uh, what should I do? So he gave me uh, his suggestions and, uh, and, and the thing, what he told me, I still remember. He says, remember, be the head of an ant, then the, the tail of a tiger. <laughs> so that was in my mind yeah. uh, ever since. So that was uh, great meeting him. And... Uh, the other one was with Bob Lutz. Uh, I, this was, we had gone to uh, attend the um, North American uh, motor show, Detroit motor show, and us the usual round tables, the dinner yeah. round tables, which we had. Yeah. And he came to our table and we were talking about a lot of things. And I asked him, I said, Bob, uh, can I have one of your special visiting cards? He says, which one? I said, the one which, in which you are, the, the pilot jet one. He says, you know, whatever. I said, yes, I know. I know a lot of things about you. <laughs> and uh, so we kept talking about the jet itself. I mean, people are yeah. just wondering well, what's happening. These this, is, two guys this, are, is, this, is, this is the MiG. This is the MiG that he's got. It's an Albatross. It's a Russian, oh, it's right. a Russian aircraft. Right, it's right. a Russian aircraft. He owns it. He owns yeah. it. And then, and then I came to know he's a great biker as well. He has two Harleys in Switzerland. Oh. So occasionally he used to go and so we talked about biking and then he drew me a picture. He said, uh, how do you know, how do you determine a guy whether he's a good, good rider or a, or a bad bike rider? So I said, I don't know. So he, he drew me a picture. He said, if you touch your knees on the ground while taking a turn, you're a good one. You're a good rider. So a lot of anecdotes uh, with Bob. He's also was a great uh, no, Amazing to, guy. You know, amazing guy. So we so can't... The, the, I mean, those were the highlights, yeah. I mean, like I said, you did a number of things, and you also worked for um, uh, Overdrive in Saudi, but then you also worked in Oman with the late w Raj Warrior, a mutual friend of ours who sadly passed away uh, not too long ago, yeah. Um, yeah. and an, in an incredible guy, and you, you really kind of hit it off with him, didn't you? I mean, he was a, and he was, again, something of a, of, a, of a stalwart of automotive media in the region, wasn't he? Absolutely, absolutely. In fact, uh, me and Raj, we, we became good friends. And we, even before I joined Automan, uh, we did a lot of gigs together. And uh, we used to respect each other. And uh, he actually wanted me to come to Oman much earlier. I, I literally made him wait for a year and a half before I said yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, after the Saudi uh, uh, fiasco, I uh, went to Oman and that was my uh, one of my longest jobs with him and we revamped Automan. We made it, uh, we actually took a lot of inspiration from your magazine. Thank and you. we, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, in terms of presentation because uh, your magazine presentation was pretty good. Uh, short, uh, the, the photography, the layouts, uh, the fonts, the way the stories were presented, a lot of influences we, we took from yours. And we also made it a, a lo we made it a local magazine, but with an international flavor. Yeah, that's and, exactly uh, what I was doing with Car. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, 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 and we we were doing quite well. I mean, yeah. there's no doubt about it. We were doing quite well. And then uh, our owner Hatim, he had a lot of uh, aspirations to get into the Shura Council, which he eventually got into. Then he lost interest in publishing, and then. Right. 
the rest is just history. So, yeah, so that yeah. was it. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's really sad. And of course, then Raj tried to do it himself for a while before, sadly, illness over, overcame him. So um, it, it's a real shame because I would have loved to have done one of these with Raj because I remember whenever I shared a car with him or went on a press event with him, it was always such a laugh. We always had such a great time, me and him. So, yeah, it's, I really miss him. Yeah. And he, he was, uh, both of us loved technology. We, we would discuss technology for ages in office, whether it's coffee, whether it's lunchtime, whatever. We would keep talking about cars and, and technologies and uh, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? And then we, we would have to justify what we were, uh, our observations were. And, and that's how we would uh, kind of uh, present our stories so that uh, people could empathize exactly what, how, what the product was. So it was good. It was, it was good. I, I, I still miss him. I mean, yeah. Just 18th was his birthday, so we had a little chat right. with his sister and all. Right, yeah. right, right. So we're nearly, we're nearly, well, we are actually well over time because I normally try to do these for 30 minutes. I always go over time, as I always say. But I can't let you go without asking you about this kind of, this sort of thing that you've been doing during lockdown, which is you've been creating these little models and things. What, what's all that about? Well, I always uh, fancied model cars, as you can see uh, behind me. Yeah. You can see a few of them. And... Uh, <clears throat> So I've been collecting cars from my childhood. I mean, the oldest one I probably will send you a photograph. It's more than 100 years old. It wow. was my grandfather's. It's a tin plate. It's a tin plate. Oh, my God. Rolls Royce. Yeah, you got, send, Rolls -Royce. you got to send me a picture of that. <laughs> I'll send you a picture of that. And, uh, and still, I, I have a lot of my old Dinky and Lesney uh, cars, plus the collection which I had over the years. But uh, the thing was, I always wanted to make a a car and during this lockdown you know you had a lot of spare time so i would look into youtube and and, and look at these uh, hobbyists how they make these cars and i said okay if they can make it then let me try yeah. it out and so first i started making them in cardboard you know old cartons and all that then i went into metal and then i found some new materials i kept experimenting with with stuff and i think i i, I sent you pictures of three cars yeah and uh, they're all basically uh, British uh, cars. Uh, one's a, a, a Defender Series 1. Uh, the other one is, an, is a Morris Bullnose 1928, uh, uh, something like that. And the red one is the Woolsley Tourer 1912. And the, the Tourer is actually, there's, there's one of them actually here in, uh, in Calcutta, which was re restored a couple of years back. And it belonged to the Viceroy of UK. So, so, I, be, uh, so I took pictures of that car and, and made them an exact replica of it. Scale so, 118. So, so how are you doing this? You're just like getting, where are you getting bits and parts and stuff? Are you just basically making them uh, everything yourself? And the raw material, the, the sheets. Uh, I'm, I'm using different materials, experimenting with different materials. So it's literally uh, carving them out. Right. So I, I, draw, I draw them out first get them uh, get the proportions right draw them out then use my cutters and tools to to make the shape then glue them in fact we use a lot of uh, automotive technology bonding technology uh -huh. because i'm gluing uh, metal and non-metal parts right and then i i made the wheels i i i looked into the uh, into youtube and see saw how they make these right. wire wheels so i i made, made those jigs I, I made a lot of jigs and and, and other things so that I could make the wheels different sizes, different si spokes, whatever. And then that's how I, I progress. So what, what you see is about six months work. And now I'm actually able to make them faster. In fact, right now I'm, I'm building an Audi Union and uh, one of the uh, Alfa Romeos. Wow. So hopefully, hopefully right. in a couple well, of weeks. We're looking, well, we're looking forward to see how that goes. Where can people see that? Are you posting these anywhere? I, I will be posting them. I will be posting them. Okay. And besides that, uh, the other thing which uh, interested me is in, in engineering of uh, automobiles and, and bikes was uh, the, uh, when I started restoring them. So I have a collection of about uh, 11 bikes now, uh, various vintage bikes, the oldest being 1938, which I'm restoring right now. It's, it's a Le Levi's, Levis A1, they call it. It's a very rare bike. Only 2000 were made in UK uh, pre-war 
and uh, a couple of BSAs, Norton's, Triumph, I have all those. And, and I've restored them over the years. Some have taken about a good 25 years to restore. But now it's, it's faster a bit because now we are able to get parts and, and uh, help from various forums and groups. But that has helped me uh, to understand the fine points of uh, mechanics. And there's a nice story I'd like to share, if you allow me. A um, couple of years back, when the McLaren SLR was launched, we, had, we were invited to test drive the car in South Africa. So after the test drives, we went to the Kealami track where there was the technical presentation and you had all these cutouts, you know, the, the, the tub, the, the cones, the, the crash cones. And there was a, there was a cut, cut out of the, uh, the seven speed uh, DCT. Now, when we were talking to the engineer about this DCT, so he was explaining the different parts. I, and I looked into it. I said, look, uh, he said, this is the state of the art technology as far as the gearbox goes because you have when you when you engage first gear the third gear gets prepares itself and by the time you've engaged the second gear the third is ready to come in so there's a it helps in the uh, reducing the time lag i said look uh, you may say this is a state of the art thing but it isn't he says why he was a german guy i said i have seen this semi-automatic clutch mechanical in motorcycle so he asked me which motorcycle. I said, Czechoslovakian motorcycle, 1950s, Java. He said, are you sure? I said, I'm 100% sure. He, he, he just went silent for a few minutes. He says, are you an engineer? I said, no, I'm a journalist. He says, you're the first person who has admitted, who has pointed this out. And I'm happy to say you are right. <laughs> this is not. This is this is adapt, an adaptation of technology, semi semi automatic clutch technology of fifties. So I said, "Wow, it's amazing!" <laughs> I've impressed so, much. So listen, yeah. on that note, I've got to let you go because we've gone well over the clock, and you know, I think that's that's a fantastic story to end on. Thanks so much for doing this. It's been fantastic to catch up with you, and uh, hopefully catch up okay. with you again soon. I'll put links below in the description so people can see what you're up to and stuff like that. But uh, all the best to you over there, and uh, yeah, speak again soon. Absolutely. Take care. Bye-bye. Whoa, an incredible trip down memory lane and uh, remembering and reminiscing over a couple of dearly departed friends as well. May they rest in peace, gone but certainly not forgotten as uh, we've brought them back to life for a, a little moment or two in, these, in this video series. Um, but also some great uh, stories and anecdotes and things that the guy has done in Dubai and stuff that we did together as well. So a real opportunity to get into the media scene there. And also this fascinating thing that he's doing now with creating these model cars. I think that's really, really interesting. He's got some other plans as well. So don't forget to follow him and uh, let me know what you thought of the conversation in the comments above below elsewhere wherever you're watching this and if you're watching this on youtube then make sure that you're subscribing to youtube.com forward slash brown car guy make sure that you're following me on all social media channels just search for hashtag brown car guy that's on instagram twitter and facebook and of course subscribe to browncarguy.com if you enjoy these videos and you're enjoying my content then maybe you can support me and you can do that on patreon.com forward slash shazad shake and then you will also find some exclusive content and also maybe some goodies such as this hat anyway that would be great even if you can't please continue to like share subscribe comment and all the rest of it that's really valued and very much appreciated thanks so much for watching and i'll catch you again soon in the next one mm -hmm.